Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. Well, let's take a look at the concept of fractional reserve banking and understanding what it is. And the example that we're gonna use is the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. So let's take a look. Okay, so banks creating new money. That's what fractional reserve banking is. And this is a kind of a really complex idea that can be really simplified in a, in a very simple slide, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But the idea here is that when I deposit money into my checking account, and let's say I live in the United States, which I don't, I live in Santiago, Chile, but let's say I put $100 into my bank, Bank of America in the United States. Bank of America is required by the Federal Reserve Bank to keep, it's really 0.1%, but let's just make it 0.2% or 20% of that in the bank as cash reserves, which is the required reserves ratio. So 20% of all deposits in the bank, account, bank of America have to stay there. The other 80%, they can package up and sell off as loans. Okay, So that 80% that Bank of America took of my money, $80, and put it out into the economy is technically new money. Because that money I deposited in the bank, it should be sitting in the bank, and that's where it should stay. But the bank can take 80% of that, or $80, and send it back out, inject it back out into the economy. And it's really like having additional money in the economy. Okay, so banks can make new money through lending money, which has then deposited and lent again in a different bank. Or we're using 20%. In the United States, the Fed rate, the federal required reserves ratio is, is 10%. But let's say banks have to keep 20% of their cash in their vault. They lend out the rest, which get redeposited in another bank, which lends out 80% of those deposits and so on and so on. And all of a sudden, though I put $100 in the bank, 80% of that is reused by the first bank, and then 80% of that um, $80 is reused by the other bank, and onward and onward. So the two key terms we need to know here are required reserves and excess reserves. Okay. Required reserves are commercial banks' requirement to keep a certain percentage, determined by the central bank, of their deposits on reserve at all times. Excess reserves are actual reserves, so the $100, minus the required reserves, in this case $20, those are called excess reserves, and this is the proportion of the total reserves that a bank is allowed to lend out. So it's money creation, because banks can lend out their excess reserves and therefore can actually create new money or new injections of money into the economy. So excess reserves lend out makes new money in the system. Yay. All right, let's look at a picture of this, and it'll make a lot of sense, and then we can move on. All right, money creation. Banks creating new money. All right, we're going to take the example. We're going to say here is bank number one. $1,000 was deposited into bank number one. Bank number one is obligated to keep... 20%, right? Well, bank one, bank two, bank three, bank four. Bank number one is required to keep 20% of that $1,000 in its bank vault. So here is the vault right here. But the $800, it can lend out, which somebody will use to buy a house. And that money, after the purchase of the house, will be deposited in to the second bank. And so that's, whose $800 is that? Well, that was mine, but that was used to buy something in the meantime through the investment, but now it's in a different bank. And now when that bank gets it, so let's say that Bank of America, here's Wells Fargo, now they have $800. They have to keep 20% of that in their vault, which is $160, but then they can take the remainder part of it, which is $640, lend it out to somebody to buy a new car. The, the, the person who sells the car takes that $640, and puts it into a bank. Let's say Citibank. Now Citibank has $640 in its reserves, of which it's required to keep $128, but it can take the remaining $521, which is 80% of $640, and uh, package up in a loan so that some cool dude can buy a Harley Davidson motorcycle. He buys his Harley Davidson motorcycle, and the seller of it deposits it in her bank, which is $521. Of that, the fourth bank, this is 
uh, let's make this a really small bank, Key Bank, which isn't really a small bank, Key Bank out of Cleveland, Ohio, but Key Bank must keep 104 of that $521 in its bank and the progress and the, the, and the system goes on. But whose money is this? That's my money. That was 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 my money. That was, my money. That was all the original $1,000 that I deposited in Bank of America, which went to Wells Fargo, which went to Citibank, which went to Key Bank. Okay? So that is how, through money creation, banks, through, through the lending out of money and the rechanging in the, res in the reserve ratio, the Federal Reserve can actually control the money supply. Say what? Okay. If the Federal Reserve were to change the ratio from, say, 20%, to 10%, well then all of a sudden, Bank of America would have $900 to lend out. And another 10% of my original deposit would get in the system, which would then have another effect because only of the 900 here, right? Only 10% of the 900 would have been, you know, Wells Fargo would have had to keep on reserves, which meant this would have been 90. And so just by changing the required reserves ratio, the Federal Bank of the United States, or the Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank, can control the money supply because by lowering the required reserve ratio, there will be more money circulating in the system. And of course, the opposite is true. If they made this all of a sudden 30% instead of 20%, there would be $300 sitting still in the bank and leaking out of the system and, st and, and less money being injected back in through the reselling of the same money. Okay? So the big picture here is that in this way, a change in the total deposits will lead to a greater change in the money supply. And the way that you'd figure that out is something called the money multiplier. So like, how would you make this into an equation? Well, the money multiplier is simply one times the reserve ratio. And in this case, it was 20% or you know, 0.2. If you made it 0.1, then it would come out with a different answer for the money multiplier. Okay, so fractional reserve banking and monetary policy sounds like this big term that isn't hard to understand, but you get it. It's fractioning up the money by changing the required reserve ratio, and that actually creates new money in, this society, in, in, in the economy um, through the reselling of the same money from bank to bank to bank to bank. All right, my friends, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we will talk to you in a bit.